この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますおー、Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for ReZero episodes 22 and 23, I think. Play it by ear, we'll see. Uh, we just defeated the Great Whale and all of its illusionary duplicate friends. Um, using the massive flugel tree, rest in peace, enormous tree that's way, maybe the oldest thing in this entire planet, like the, the oldest being on, on planet ReZero. Um, <laughs> just chop it down, get rid of the whale. Environmental advocates are just like up in arms and freaking out. But we did defeat the beast, and it was okay. It was okay. Um, my perspective on the episode is a little bit soured by the response that I've gotten. Uh, uh, man, some of y'all are pissed. <laughs> like, shockingly easy to, to piss off accidentally. Um, yikes. Breathwork. It's very helpful. Uh, uh therapy. <laughs> also pretty good. But let's, let's get to it. What, what happened and why are people pissed? And... Should they be? And how should I respond to it? I'll start actually at the end of that. How should I respond to it? Because going back, I sort of see that I've got like a couple of options. One of them is to just bow and scrape and eat humble pie and be like, oh, I'm so wrong. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so one option. One option would be to like double down on my perspective on the episodes. That's another option. It's just going to alienate the people who didn't like it. And then there's trying to sort of split the difference, which is my nature as somebody who likes to seek out compromise in general, um, sort of split the difference. Eat a little bit of humble pie, like one slice, and then sort of try to explain that I think that I still stand by what I said. And that's what I'm going to do. So humble pie style. Starting off, my main criticism of the core of the fight with the big whale was that there wasn't a piece that expressed effectively to me that Wilhelm and Theresia's story started from a place of Theresia not wanting to fight. A lot of people have put a lot of words into explaining that I should have definitely understood this, and I should have. And the reason that I should have is because it was said explicitly in the previous episode, not in episodes 20 or 21, but kind of honestly kind of offhand at least to my mind in episode 19 but fair he did definitely say it and if i had remembered that he had said it i definitely wouldn't have made the complaints that i did because the complaints that i made were pretty explicit the cornerstone of this emotional interaction doesn't exist because we don't have any evidence that says that Teresa didn't want to fight and without that being present the whole interaction seems kind of weird and sexist from wilhelm i have to project in the weird sexist vibes but not that much, really. It's, it's not that hard to do, and it does feel pretty weird. But the line is actually there, and it's just my fault for missing it. So, humility and humble pie, um num num. Yeah, the line's there, and I missed it. The double down is, I'm still right. <laughs> I'm still fucking right. The double down is that everything that I said still lines up, and I'm still coherent with it. I said pretty straightforwardly, this all makes sense. If there's some piece that expresses that Teresia doesn't want to be a soldier, doesn't want to wield the blade. Am I just reading it entirely wrong? Is this a romantic gesture in some way that I'm just not seeing? If, if we got the impression, like, maybe what I'm missing is that Teresia doesn't want to be this, right? If we had this arc where where her going out and sitting by the flowers was her way of escaping her duties and like all she really wanted was to be a cute pretty princess and not have to do sword stuff fine then it works right then it's like well she's just grudgi begrudgingly going on doing this sword saint stuff and he gets to free her from that and they get to engage in whatever their preferred roles in a relationship end up being but as is he just like arrogantly challenges the greatest swords person on the planet and then is like aren't you glad that now you don't have to do this thing that you're the best in the world at and i can do it for you and it's my reason for being that it's just like feels weird to suck the reason out of someone's existence oh that piece actually does exist and then the whole thing makes sense and all of my criticisms with of it were that it only it makes sense except for that and with that missing it doesn't make sense 
So my mistake was missing that piece. And that's it. Everything else that I said, I stand by. In fact, I'm going to double even further down on it. I don't think it's great storytelling in the first place, even if that piece of information was in the episodes that we watched. And I understand at this point a little bit of why. Turns out Teresa and Wilhelm have a three-part mega trilogy series that investigates their whole romantic life and war crimes and all sorts of shit. And that all gets boiled down into a really kind of pitiful series of flashbacks woven into a story that kind of doesn't need to turn into a side story in order to express those elements and honestly feels sort of shooed in. In the way that, like, you're watching a movie and there's suddenly a cameo by some other character that's in a similar franchise owned by the same company, you're like, why the fuck was that there? And they came in and, like, swept in and did an airstrike and fixed the problem and in the middle, like, one of the mi middle climactic tensions, and you're like, what the fuck was that about? Why did we just take some of that tension away and take it away from our main characters and hand it to these side characters that we don't care about? And then you realize that there's actually a huge fandom around that particular character who got really excited when they showed up on screen and went Wah! and yay i mean okay that's cool and i don't have a problem with that it does give those people something to be Wah! and yay about and if wilhelm and teresia are like your favorite story in the re-zero universe and you really want to see them done justice don't you want it to be better than this i would i think it's pretty thin I think given all of the attempts that people have made to like explain it to me and and try to make it make sense and express that it's like actually super deep and romantic and like potent and powerful all falls really flat for me with all the context with all the information presented this doesn't work so there's my criticism there's my double down mixed with my humble pie i think that for what they were going for I wouldn't have criticized it as strongly as I did if I just remembered that Wilhelm does have a line where he says that my Theresia never wanted to wield the sword or something like that. Some people have said that I should have really interpreted she liked looking at flowers as not wanting to do the war, which makes a lot of sense if you actually understand their story, but makes zero sense if you don't understand their story. So I think I'm just going to dismiss it. But my position is this. If I'd remembered that that piece was there, it would have made a whole lot more sense, and I probably wouldn't have complained about it at all in the episodes, and we wouldn't be having this discussion now. Now that I recall that it does, it did occur, people pointed it out to me, I've gone back and I've looked at it and looked at a couple of other things. I'm just not sold on the whole piece of storytelling as a whole. I think it's pretty weak compared to some of the more centrally focused storytelling that we've done, and it does feel like an outside or external or separate or side story cameo into the main story without the context that would make it work. Does that mean that you have to go and explore all those side stories in order to make the main plot of ReZero work? No. Does that mean that I have a problem with cameos and stuff like coming in from the side that's going to make some people really excited and happy? No. But I do think that if you're going to do something like that, you really risk sucking the wind out of the rest of your plot by like diverting a bunch of energy toward these characters, and then unfortunately, to my mind, not very well expressing their story. Which I don't think is a complicated enough story that it couldn't have been expressed really effectively in the time that we had, but it seemed like it was more of an excuse to make man too angry to die, be too angry to die, and defeat the whale. Uh, when it might have been more interesting and coherent if that piece of the story wasn't there at all. I know it can't not be there. It's reality as far as the story goes. It's like in the in the world of the thing, Wilhelm is really there and he really wants to defeat the beast and it makes a lot of sense and it's like deeply emotionally resonant for this character, but not for me, not for us watching. I didn't find it that emotionally resonant. I found it kind of bland and confusing. So there's my double down. My double down is, I still think it kind of sucks. My humble pie is, I missed it at first, for sure. My double double down is, with all the context present, with all the information present, I still think it's weak. I don't think it's very strong. Maybe my, my, my opinion would be dramatically different if I were to read the, the Wilhelm and Teresia side stories, but as it stands, I just don't care at this point. <sighs> God, it's fucking draining to be yelled at on the internet.
I gotta do a drawing. Oh. So we've felled the monster. And we've also felled the flugel tree, which I think really sucks, because that thing was majestic. Oh, the monster, by the by. So people got mad at me for this, too, which I think is wild. I made the, I think, very reasonable assumption that the enormous whale, named after one of the seven deadlies, gluttony, was itself one of the seven deadlies, or archbishops of sin. Because the only other one that we knew was the archbishop of sloth, Betelgeuse. And so it just sort of makes sense there. Apparently it's not. I, I don't know what that means. Does that mean that there's another dude out there who is the Archbishop of Gluttony and it wasn't the whale? Now I'm real confused about that piece. Anyway, people got mad at me for it. I, I don't understand why. It seems very confusing to me. Um, regardless, big whale, very dead. Now we are off and onward with a couple of allies. Uh, uh, some, some Inu people, for the most part to go and find and kill Beetlejuice. Or more honestly, we're just going to go and try to protect Amelia and make sure that the manor doesn't come under assault. Which makes a lot of sense now that we've got these sort of mining rights and trade agreements. Now you want to protect territory that you have a vested financial interest in. It makes perfect sense to me. We have a wrinkle, a problem, an issue, and it's Julius waltzing down the road like he owns the place this motherfucker subaru is still filled with resentment toward this guy and he needs to overcome it that's the straight and narrow simple and easy of this thing as far as has been presented to us in the story julius hasn't been a bad guy almost at all there are some moments that sort of verge on the edge where he's a little bit gatekeepy and kind of an asshole but when you look at it in context, he's standing up for the entire institution of knighthood, which Subaru insulted directly to his face in front of the entire court, and also sort of made a fool of himself in a number of ways. Julius could have been a lot meaner about what he did, and uh, honestly did a lot to put Subaru in his place, and, and in some weird ways, you could say is responsible in some ways for Subaru's turning it around and transforming that. Sometimes you need to get smacked by the world in order to realize you're going in dramatically the wrong direction. Does that mean that a person who puts themselves in the position to be the smacker is to be lauded? No. Usually the people who put themselves in the position to be the smacker, to be the like, ha, huh, the world, the you know, I'm the instrument of karma in reality and I'm going to show you, usually that's an arrogant prick. Julius is a little bit of an arrogant prick for sure, but I do think his core is actually probably in the right place and he's a very useful ally to have along alongside us for this battle this portion of the thing we need all the help that we can get honestly we need reinhard but he's not here so i'll take another night a hundred percent can subaru deal cope mauled seethe can he swallow his pride and indignation long enough to actually interact with this guy and maybe come to the point where he realizes these things on his own? Realize that he's not, he doesn't have to just grit his teeth through it, but that he actually might like the guy. There might be room for them to interact and see eye to eye. I don't know. I think so. I think after the transformation that he's gone through and the improvements that he's made, the ways that he has learned to act and behave... I think we could see a really good set of interactions coming out of Subaru. But his initial reaction, his initial sort of, uh, makes me think that it's going to be a tough road to walk. And frankly, we don't have time for that. If we die here, we loop again. And we only just managed to beat the whale. So we got to be serious. We got to be on the ball. And we need all the help we can get even if it comes from somebody we think we don't really like. Okay, that said, now I'm going to do a drawing. Um. So what, just, what, what I just knocked over, it's very funny. I, I've, I've ceased drinking, and it was my birthday the other week, and a friend of mine bought me a, a very, very nice, very expensive bottle of beer. <laughs> Because I really like, I really like, like, quality Belgian ales. <laughs> but I'm not drinking. 
<sighs> one of those things. <laughs> Just one of those things. Okie dokie. Oh, you know what? I know. I know what I'll talk about while I draw this. Negativity. Just in general. Just something, something that actually genuinely kind of ticks me off. Just very slightly. Though, so, some of you who watch a bunch of my shows will know that I've been, like, in the morning, while I'm getting ready, I like to go and listen to some music. Usually I'll find an album or two, or, you know, a, a playlist maybe, some, some pieces of music. Sometimes things that are related to the show that I'm watching, sometimes not. It's just part of my, my sort of getting going in the morning. I find that music um, gets my heart rate up and, and gets me moving, gets me able to move and think and be a full functioning human being. Better than not listening to music does. There are some bands that I really like, some musical artists, and some of them have recently come out with new albums. So here's, here's what ticks me off, and it's, it's not even enough data points to be a trend. It's not even on it. It's nothing. It's nothing. But in the past month, two big albums that I found really exciting, really exciting, have dropped. I guess actually three, but I haven't, I'm not fully sold that my opinion on the, on the third one is correct, so not sure. Two big albums. One of them, a brand new album by Justice, the, I think they're French, um, EDM duo who are, they're fantastic in general, um, they're the people who made Cross, one of the most interesting EDM albums, period, and something that I would call, like, foundational to my understanding of the genre. It's like, it's a core thing, it's, it's important. They came out with a new album. And then this morning, I, I went on Spotify and pop, holy shit, a, a brand new Bring Me the Horizon album. Oh my god, goodness. Well, a couple weeks ago, when I listened to Justice's new album... I ended up being exceptionally disappointed by it. It didn't grip me. It didn't grab me. It didn't do anything for me at all. It was kind of... felt bland and uninspired. And then this morning, Bring Me the Horizon, you know? A band that I see as having, having called out some really potent social zeitgeists and, like, really nailed uh, some pieces of of the pandemic in some interesting ways in some of their albums and uh, the emotional experience of, of modern reality felt nothing from their new album felt nothing felt like a, a mis mismatched hodgepodge of styles and and intent without a message that came through clearly to me so there's there's my my PV sadness for right now fucking sucks when you are really excited for something and then and and it ends up not not matching up to your expectations it's something that that i think anyone in a creative field sort of struggles with certainly i do i mean you you watched me sort of struggle with it to some extent right now part of the reason that people get so uh, venomous or or angry when I make a mistake or forget something is because I've developed a reputation over the years for being excellent at this. Um, really, truly. Like, people have pretty low standards for reactors, I think. You know, it's a reaction channel. You're just going to watch the show. And a lot of reactors are really fucking bad at this. Like, shockingly terrible at paying attention or... You know, picking up what the show is being put down. Just general media literacy isn't isn't great all across the world at present, and is going to continue getting worse. I think, which is very sad. Um, but I've developed a reputation for being really good at it. You know, for reading things really clearly and 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 sort of having the eye for it. And so, when I don't come to the conclusions that people expect, or I don't end up loving the things that they love, or when I make a mistake especially, um, especially if it seems like an easy mistake to make, right? If it's like, or I'm sorry, if it seems like an easy mistake to have remedied or like a hard mistake to make, like something easy to get, people get really, really, uh, it's almost like heartbroken or betrayed is the, the degree of it. It's like a betrayal. 
it's like i trusted you i i trusted you to understand this completely and and perfectly and you don't and so you're bad and so you're like everything that i knew about you was wrong and you've betrayed my trust it's sort of the same way that i think people feel when they identify with a main character in a story and then that that character makes um some significant mistake you know people people do it with subaru people do it with rudy in mushoku tensei big time um you know you identify with this character and you you put some like faith into that you put some trust that by identifying with them they're not going to act in some way that will make you like question that identification but the reality is that we as individuals make mistakes all the time and we make mistakes and take actions that go against our own core principles, beliefs, ideals, um, viewpoint on self. And it's, it's just a very real thing that happens. And it sucks a lot to get that hard flip from people. Um, but it's, well, it's, it's worrisome to me because the same sort of behavioral pattern can be placed upon yourself. You know, you, you put yourself on a pedestal or you put yourself in a position where you think you're, you're competent or you think you're good at something. And then as soon as you can't level up or, or can't match up, you feel like you're betraying yourself. You feel like you've done something dramatically wrong when the mistake making process is like totally normal and good, honestly, like really important for growth. Yeah, it just... It worries me how hmm, how willing we seem to be to get attached and then reject. Attach and then reject. We're desperate for connection, desperate for the ability to see ourselves in others and to, to, to see good in people and stuff like that. But then as soon as they act human, as soon as they act human, it's like, bam betrayal betrayal and then and psychologically like the feeling of being betrayed of getting betrayed by somebody is is shattering it's shattering it's so destructive more more than almost anything else so then i i look and i i see the way we create idols and heroes and the way that people who have a uh how do you put it like a financial interest in positioning themselves as idols or heroes, politicians, um, actual idols, celebrities of all sorts. They have a vested interest in being your hero, you know, being perceived as greater than human, larger than life. So they will. And little kids and adults and everybody in between will see people as heroes and raise them up, put them on on high and on pedestals and almost worship them. <sighs> then you find out that they've got some sex scandal or they're a violent abuser or or they've just made a mistake like started using a drug or chose the wrong team or decided to go a different direction with their career or fell down some echo chamber rabbit hole that got them convinced of something that's silly and the response that comes to them but the weight of betrayal that people feel when a hero or an idol falters in even the slightest and the willingness that I see so many people have to not just dismiss them, but to throw them away completely. That you go, you don't go from, oh, awesome, great, to like, ah, he's a normal person. You go from awesome, great, on high, to devil, monster, like betrayer, liar, failure. It's, it's, it's spooky. I think that's one of the core values of stories of struggle stories of self-improvement and growth like the one we're watching and witnessing and experiencing right now or like mushoku tensei which also fits 
knowing that someone can start in a dark place and move up from there to become a hero, I think that's the antidote to the feeling like all your heroes keep becoming monsters, is to know that monsters can be heroes too. Let's watch episode 22 of Re-Zero. I've got episode 22 up and ready to go. There will be two versions, picture in picture in the description, timer on the YouTubes, beep beep timer to count you down. Early access on the Patreon. Let's get into it. Beep beep timer. No P again? Huh? Oh, he's not allowed to be here? Got it. So you're you're somebody else. Is that actually his Is that actually his name? Is your name is actually Julius Euculius? Yeah. <laughs> I really want him to just go full Yankee, just be like, uh, eh. <laughs> Alright, he's, he's, he's machoing. No, you still suck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Subaru. All the animosity is coming from you. <laughs> Did that actually dispel the animosity? That little chuckle. Yes. Hmm. Ricardo's coming with us, right? As long as he's there, I'm happy. Yeah, more times than you can actually say. Where are all his sword? Okay. Yeah, you know where they're going to be, where they're going to attack. Okay. Kill the, kill the witch before they can kill them, I guess? Oh, the same merchants. No prob. No prob. God, it's good to have allies. Yeah, it'll look like a war or an invasion. Yeah, let's freaking go! Uh! Uh! Y Julius is useful! Sorry, his name is Yuli. His name is Yuli. Yeah! <laughs> Just, just to be clear. <laughs> hey, it's important. It's my honor, bro. He, f he fought him over his honor, so. Damn. Good words. I hope that we can get even close. I'm very afraid. Uh. 
Oh, got you. Dude, he's legit. This guy's legit. He's fine. She's just, yeah, this, he's a full knight. It really pisses you off how good this guy is, doesn't it? Ah, ah, ah! Are you going to be able to physically apologize right now? Oh, it's hard, man. That sucks. Yeah. Oh. But maybe we could be friends in the future. <laughs> yeah! Okay. All right. <laughs> hmm. Damn it. <laughs> they could hate fuck, though, right? <laughs> Shippers explode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's my favorite thing I've said in a while. <laughs> Hi, Amelia. Gonna get a weird letter. How's life? I have a strange bad vibe. Do you have a strange bad vibe? Is he trudging here alone? Nice mushrooms. Quiet, quiet. Oh. Hi, witchies. He knows that they'll that they'll listen and the bow. Whoa. Yeah, I don't think that would have worked. But a speech with the boss? Sure thing. Oh motherfucker. <laughs> Suddenly it's my favorite episode. <laughs> All we need is Beetlejuice to be here. Ah. Uh. uh. <laughs> what's good? Yeah, what's good, man? Been a while. This is the move, man. I did not expect him to be this smart. Again and again. He probably is meant to be. Six. Sin, Archbishop, not seven. So we're just gonna... Okay, okay. We're just nixing gluttony. We're just gonna toss gluttony. That's stupid. That's dumb as fuck. No, it trembles. Yeah, give us the book. What? No account of you? Is it written from the future? What is in that book? Steal that fucking book. Steal the book. Steal the book. No, no, steal the book.
pretending that you had one but don't have one anymore? <laughs> He's gonna kill you. <laughs> oh, he just goes straight for murder. I knew it. <laughs> It's the whole point! That's the whole point. Alright, where yeah, where's the attack? There they are. That'll do pretty well. Can we get a Ricardo? One Ricardo, please. They all can teleport or something like it, right? Maybe they just move fast. Fingers. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, that looks like a CTE, man. <laughs> that looks, that looks encephalopathy. <laughs> oh, my. Sure, man. Oh, we'll just switch out and let the sword saint, former sword saint, take care of it. That did not work. That did not work, did it? What the fuck? No, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. He's dead, but what the fuck? There's no way, right? Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. When it's life or death, we bang. <laughs> we start blasting. <laughs> What was that? Well, it is, it is the obvious thing to do. A hundred. What was that weird egg? Oh, shit. Okay. Yep. Read the book. Read the book. Read the book. Read the book with Ferris, like, casting a spell. Oh, they know what it is. <coughs> no, they know what it is. Holy shit. What? I need the lore dump, bro. Right. So why are we so afraid of them? But what makes them devout? Devout's an internal thing. That seems worrisome. That seems genuinely worrisome. Phrasing, words. You took the wrong part of that. You took the wrong part of that. I feel like there were more. Oh, alive? Okay, so not all of them are fingers. Just higher than... Are there knuckles? Nails? Oh. Yeah, what? I don't trust it. Please blow him into a smith smithers... <laughs> See, I, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced by his physical body being gone at all. Good job, folks.
Yeah, way too good. Badger boy. You should come up with some better jokes. I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. Like, something's gonna go so fucking wrong, right? Oh wait, this is fun. It is going too well. Oh. Oh. He can't even see them. None of them can see them. Fucking Beetlejuice. Ho! Oh! Roy. We had no idea what we were up against. We had no idea. A baby? A kid? Another one takes on the... Whoa, yeah, it transfers. It transferred. What's up with the fingertips? So that means any of the ten fingers can swap? You wouldn't happen to be pride, would you? It's these same lines. And you have a gospel. Though inexperienced to return love? Doesn't Subaru have it on him? A spirit? Is Amelia around? That's not her color of spirit. Genuinely afraid? What the hell? What's up, little guys? Thank you. No, 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 no! Thank you, Wilhelm. Can he see it? And your brain? Stab, stab again. Please stab again. I don't want to hear this. Oh, there it is. What the fuck? No. It's a transfer. It just goes to whoever's next.
Okay, so ten fingers each with ten knuckles or whatever? Fuck. So it's essentially an endless campaign until we eliminate them all. And he's gonna full self-flame. Nah, man, you couldn't have... You couldn't have. If you were to save all these people, the only way is to reloop. And I don't think it's not. I don't think it's worth it. Polar opposite to his... You're just going through the motions. Yo, fuck Henry. This is a good speech. Shakespeare. It's a being thing. God, that was not good. What a twist. We gotta get there first. Let's not count those. Let's not count those chickens. You ended it with, I still don't like you, and we're not gonna be friends. <laughs> ah. Also, very explicitly and consciously. <laughs> And, and out loud, very loudly. Alright. Ah. What? 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 We just ported. We're just gone out of everywhere and then ram? What? 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 I'm so confu- well, I guess we gotta watch another episode. Good thing that I planned to do that already. What? What? What was that? What? And then the flower- the flower pet? What? Is this one I have to insta-skip? Yes. 
Uh, what the fuck is that mist stuff? It looks totally different from Amelia Frozen Mist. It looks totally different from Whale Fog Mist. I have no idea what it is. This episode is pretty rad. It starts off right where I really wanted it to, with these two facing down. And, well... Subaru still being in a resentful state toward it. Uh, I'm glad that this wasn't what fixed it, because it wasn't clear at all. A lot of interaction, but everybody puts their trust in him. Like, genuinely and seriously. The little, like, I can't, as a knight, do this thing is pretty interesting to me. It shows that Julius is, well, our our perspective on him so far has been that he will do anything to withhold his honor as a knight and like the honor of knights as a as a unit as a, a, a as an industry as a sector as a class let's say even but his sense of justice and morality is such that he will like lie about his his station in order to go do a thing that is unknightly honestly and go against the spirit of or like the letter of that in order to to fulfill the spirit of it i think that's pretty cool and demonstrates to us that there really is room for us to get to know and appreciate julius it is definitely a lot on subaru being a bit of a stick in the mud on that aspect I don't really and it's all present right here he knows that he should probably be able to overcome this, but we get that moment where he's like, I really don't want to fucking forgive you. Grr, we're still enemies. Grr. That's cute. It's very cute, I think. It's, um... Well, it's what it looks like when a person is struggling with the way that they feel versus the way that they'd like to feel. You know? It's, it's a real... Real tough struggle to try to take your rational brain and use it to influence your emotional brain. And the reasons are straightforward for that. Your emotional brain is deeper rooted and anything from your rational brain kind of has to filter through it to, to, to solidify. Like the the root base of your, your brain system is where those emotional and, and limbic and other responses come from. And your rational cortex is way on the outside of that. So it has to actually literally filter signals through um it's like which one's in control well it's it's the gateway it's the emotional center it's the downstairs brain as would be expressed in uh, in siegel and bryson's the whole brain child a book that uh is built for parents and to be shared with their children um and basically anybody anywhere who deals with humanoids at any at any level very important very useful book um it it expresses out sort of quadrants or sides of the brain upstairs downstairs left and right um for like in terms of upstairs downstairs like animalistic instinctual emotional reactions to things and motivations for things versus upstairs being the more cognizant conscious um, um thought focused rational side of the brain and um when push comes to shove, usually the emotional side wins. It's stronger, it's older, it's deeper seated, but you can get them in balance and you can get to a point where you can recognize in your rational brain that the emotional brain isn't doing the part that you want it to be doing, that the emotions don't line up, the way that you feel and the way that the actual experience happened aren't accurate. And then you end up in a situation that's a real struggle, which is that you're trying to control or alter a stronger piece of your mind with a, a weaker piece of your mind. And you're going to run into a real wall there. Um, if you've ever been in a situation where you know that you need to make some emotional change, you need to forgive somebody or you need to overcome something and you can't help it, you just keep ruminating on it or you keep coming back to the same like spark of the thing that pisses you off about the situation or whatever it is, then you know what this feels like and you can identify with this these moments from Subaru where he's like but at the, the core of me I really don't like this even though I rationally know that I should I just fuck this is a great depiction of it I think I think it's a great depiction of it and I think it's as real as can be and I think it's well it's one of those things that I think is admirable what we see from Subaru is still kind of shitty in terms of his actual behavior, but where he's going is admirable with it. He's recognizing that the way that he feels and the way that he should feel are 
probably a little bit different, and he's actively trying to act in a way that's closer to the way that he thinks he should be feeling than the way that he actually does. Actively pushing to overcome. Fine. Not trying to be friends, but we can ride together. We can move forward together. And we turn here to Amelia alone. For the first time, we really spend any time with her in the manor. She does seem very alone, doesn't she? We don't ever see her interacting with Ram, who we know is here. Puck is there, of course. And they're together. But Roswell isn't. She's just tired but unable to asleep. Uh, unable to sleep. Stuck here in the Mather's domain. And Subaru is the bait. Cockroach bait. And he uses his knowledge. They bowed to him once. Will they again? They will. More than a little bit of respect. Some weird warship. Beetlejuice is beetly and juicy. I love this guy. I fucking love him. Not sure if I like his second incarnation as much. He loses some of the clown wild weirdness that I've come to really appreciate. And the like the trappings don't work quite as well when you're not dressed like a jester. But it's good to see you again, Beetly boy. It's good to see you. And to weasel out some information that doesn't make any sense. Love, love, love of the witch. The gospel is the thing that allows me to channel that love or something like that. And what am I supposed to do with this love in the first place? What am I supposed to, where am I supposed to go with it? Okay. So I have a genuine gripe with this shit. Of the six sin archbishops, in what fucking tradition are there six? And gluttony is a whale who's not one of the seven. What the fuck? I feel entrapped. That's, that's what this feels like. This feels like entrapment, okay? Because I happen to know that there are seven deadlies, and gluttony is one of them. That leads me to being wrong about assigning the whale the, the title of sin archbishop. The only thing that could make this worse is if one of the other the other existing six is named Gluttony, and we've actually skipped a different one. Like lust isn't one of them, right? It's there is a human who's Gluttony, and there is also the whale. That would be wild. But as it stands, this pisses me off a lot, a lot. <laughs> there are six characters not seven there are six characters named pride lust wrath sloth envy greed and then there's there's a whale named gluttony who just just decides to totally separate thing fuck off fuck off that's garbage. <laughs> That's absolute garbage. Okay, whatever. Received the gospel. He kind of did. It was presented to him in the previous loop, but certainly not in this one. Presentation of the gospel, proof of love. And then he says, my gospel has no account of you. And That's where my sticking point really is. You're telling me that this gospel has predictions about what will be? That's really interesting. What is it? What is this book? I wonder if it's the accounts of someone who's already lived through this world. In some, some sense. I don't know. Maybe their predictions or something like it. The Jap- They used the- The- The Roman word gospel, right? Fukunisho? Fukuin. Fukuin. The, okay, so the reason that I'm really investigating this is because gospel is a word that has like very specific Christian meanings and may or may not have those meanings in the Japanese. 
the cause of happiness is one one idea there and then the fuku the root is fortune or good fortune gospel means the good news so that is what it's saying it's saying that it's the the sound of blessing or the noise of good news fukuin okay so it really does line up with the the like western ideas of what a gospel would be that tells me so little what i was kind of hoping to find was if there was any insight as to whether it was like a record of the past or perhaps predictions of the future it's unclear our our present like biblical texts are a weird mishmash of both so no idea what fortune are you here to deliver I used it as a coaster and it got messy, so I threw it out. It's so fucking good. And he, he just hesitate, 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 murder. <laughs> no! You did what to the figurine? You did what to my first edition copy of the ReZero Light novel? Ah! Ah! This is a great plan. My brain trembles. Yeah, just in time to get chopped the fuck up. Bam, wham, smash, bang, boom, dead and done. No problem. Way too easy. They are kind of horrifying. Our right to search out the spoils of battle, but also the word use. We've butchered them, and now we'll butcher them more. The fear that they have toward it is really interesting, as though it will infect their minds just by having it there. Seems like ignorance to me. That seems like where it stems from is from like a, a a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding. This to me looks like what middle class white families were doing with Dungeons and Dragons in the seventies. Ah, ah, Satan worship, right? It's it's not interesting unless it is actually a magic book that infects your minds. Don't point it at me. Don't do something as stupid as trying to read a gospel. Is it that dangerous? It's proof. It's a sacred text. They're delivered to anyone who, who has potential. And once a person gets it, imagine that they're now a devout member. As though acquiring it on its own makes them a devout member. Seems like you'd have to actually be able to believe it. I wonder if those members of the cult can actually read it. Petalgeus almost seemed to be, almost certainly seemed to be able to, because he did flip through and he was like, my gospel has no record of you. Super weird. Okay, I'm very confused by the nature of the gospel and very intrigued. I find this to be a solid and interesting piece of mystery that I'm very interested in, in, in dealing with. He won't come back, right? Well, unfortunately, he will as a new one. This is nice and genuinely horrifying. It it brings us right back to Rem getting killed in the basement. It's like instant horror, instant bad. Suddenly everything went very, very wrong. And the reason is right there. The title transfers. It doesn't seem like the knowledge or the understanding does. It doesn't seem like... Like, this person has the knowledge or memory of the interaction that Subaru just had with previous Petal Goose. Doesn't seem like it. But the ability to transfer, like, station, persona, that's all there. How? I don't know. I think the voice actor or actress, it seems like, an, it sounds like an actress, does a really good job of trying to match the same intonation. It is very weird for me and, and hard to grapple with just because I think that the original VA for Petal Goose was really fucking good. And so this doesn't quite match it. No gospel. Though inexperienced to return love. I'm so interested. I'm so interested in what does love mean and how do it be working. What brings that spirit there in the first place? I'm not sure. It's not them. It's not Ricardo. We don't know anyone else here who has spirit manipulation powers, and it's not Amelia, it's not her color. 
If it were Rem, maybe? That doesn't seem right either. How does Wilhelm know that the hands are there? Can he see them? Or is he just that fucking good? I'm going to choose to live in a world where I believe that Wilhelm is just that fucking good. And I got to mention this moment because I think it's just clever. I think we break the 180 rule. I think that's what we do to make this so clever. Yeah, we break the 180 rule. Essentially. Right, Wilhelm's on the left, other characters on the right. Flip-flop, Wilhelm's on the right, other characters on the left. That, that should mess with your mind. It should make these look like they're too fast, or, or like, too speedy, or shocking. And it does. You know, he's swinging one direction, and then he's swinging the other direction. So it ends up looking like chop-chop, and it actually ends up being chop-chop, isn't it? Okay, that's even more clever, isn't it? <laughs> we only show the one sweep of his sword in one direction. We do put the, the little swing swings. Ha! Ha! That's cute! Your brain can tremble as much as it wants. We're gonna kill you again! And the weight of this partial failure does weigh on Subaru. It hits him hard and it hurts him. So it's really a great time for Wilhelm to show up. And tell him, essentially, the opposite of what he said about his, his previous interactions on the training field. In those moments, he saw a person who had decided not to fight. Who had decided to train as a way of running away. And he told him not to do that. Now he sees a person who's chosen to fight, regrets or no, and tells him to move forward. If you've made that decision, then don't give up no matter what. Something that should only make sense if you've already embarked upon the path. The kind of motivational push that affirms what you've already chosen to do. Doesn't tell you what you should be doing or how to guide your life. It says, if you are going to choose this difficult way forward, strive hard. I really like it. I really, really like it. If there's anything left in you, fight. So we start off on the move. Move forward to speak with Julius. A petal floats by and the world changes in an instant. Suddenly an empty road in the middle of a blizzard with a rem carrying a beautiful flower. Where did we go? And what the hell is happening? Find out in zero seconds as I return very quickly to the next episode. See you in a second. Peace! Okay, this time we've got some custom subs for episode 23, and I've got them loaded in and ready to go. So let's find out what we're dealing with here. Beep beep timer. Home slice? Frozen? Dream space? There's that spirit. Thanks, Home Slice. <gasps> Recognized. What the fuck? Oh, did you hit a, an imitation space as well? Yeah, everybody did. Okay. Okay. Cool. This wasn't isolated.
I don't see. Was that your spirit, Julius? Look at my little buds. Good timing to try to make up with Julius. Yeah, why is this Whomping Subaru? Rem! Why? What? Hi. Are you trying to save him? Rem, are you trying to save him? What? What the fuck? You don't need to die. What are you on about, Rem? Hey, first OP in a while. Did she set this trap, I wonder? She was holding the flower. Maybe our letter arrived. Just warning them that there would be an assault by the witch cult. Maybe this was a trap for them. I don't know. Maybe Rem's been evil the whole time. I don't think so. No, you explain. No, you explain. What? What? What are you on about? The fuck? Huh? Oh. Basically told them I, I don't fucking want to talk to you at all. Oh. Who erased our letter? <laughs> Did you write it in lemon juice? Did you write it in invisible ink, Barazu? Alright, you said that before. Alright, hug time. <laughs> hug time. Word, that's not true. Yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe not like that, but <laughs> we'll take it. He doesn't have great standards. It's fine, Wilhelm. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, we just, we teleport to getting that done. They're all alive! This is amazing! Well... You're all gonna die if you stay here! <laughs> Get out. So we're doing this like termites? We got a tent your village. 
Ah, shit. Okay, this is... This could be fine. Just tell them the truth. <laughs> Shit. That is correct. Fuck. Hold it together. Hold it together. Now she obviously does have everything to do with it. Welcome to racism. <laughs> Julius with the push? Oh, Fairy Chan! better Don't let them convince you <laughs> Little poke little little poke Thanks fairy Yo -ku. Yeah, but you'll all die if you stay here. You're all gonna die if you stay here. Yeah, that's the fair and fair and balanced of it. Thank you for the backup, Ram. Ram. <laughs> all right, we evac. Yeah. Yeah! Woo! Safe humans. Ha! <laughs> oh, hello, child. Oh, you care? You care? Oh! Amelia. Lonely as fuck. Also, she's here to fight. Yeah! 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 Let's go, Amelia. Did she try to set up to protect the village? Oh, she set up the Did she set did she set up the the trap that they fell into? The sleepy trap? It's still unclear to me who set up the the sleepy trap. I guess it must have been must have been Ram. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Julius just says that with a Excuse me? It's fucking what? Sir. <laughs> Fighter subclass. <laughs> Just get less spell slots. Okay, he's a fighter subclass. He's, he's an arcade tra uh, 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 <laughs> That's great! Spirit Knight is a sick subclass. Yeah, that was weird. Connect. Nectar. Connect. Oh, so that's why he felt everybody's gates. He felt everybody's words and stuff? So there is something weird about his gate.
You mean like God of Cold or something, so... Yeah, I wonder what did happen with that. Hmm. Are you being flirted with? Yeah. Yeah, fairy. No, you. <laughs> Oh my god, fairy. Are you in heat? Are you in heat? What? Oh, got him! What the fuck? Nice. I was wondering what creepy shit you were up to, fairy. I believe it. <laughs> huh? Huh? Oh boy. Oh my god. Your clothes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, holy shit, that was bad. <laughs> All clothes exploded off, Ferris still survived and healed themselves? Holy shit! Again, the no regrets. I don't know. We keep getting these losses that I think hit the level of unacceptable. Oh my god, he can see it. Ah! Too many fucking petals. Too much use. Thank God for Wilhelm. Okay, and it transfers. Can we wit witness the transfer? Uh. Huh? Ow. Come on, I don't think Wilhelm would get hit by something like that. We just sent Ferris away. Oh shit, it's a swap. It's a swap. Fuck, 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 fuck. This is really deeply bad. Okay, you've made yourself the bait. Oh. That is a very vague order. No, goddammit, you should've said it! You might not get another chance, man. This went bad. Fast.
The barrier. The barrier. What does carrying the crystal do, I wonder? Mm hmm. Oh, the homies, they do smell witchy, witchy smells. Yeah. Oh, so he's barriered and you're not. I didn't know it would work that way, but that's really good. Good job, Subaru. Everyone will still be dead. Shit. No, he's the worst. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Amelia? Hi, Amelia. Don't get fucking killed by this. I'm really- I'm worried about you being here. I know you're real powerful and stuff. <laughs> hey, let her have this one. I think she's got it, yeah. That's a great line, Ferris. Ooh, with all the, the crystal bits. Okay, so they're projecting all of that onto... onto her. Damn. Unrequited. Oh, good, good. Captured, captured, good. Not that that's gonna be useful. That's not gonna be useful. Just kill him. Yeah, alright, we don't need to hear that. Alright, victory! With great cost. And they got to witness the evil half-elf save their asses. Are we gonna have Petra run up and be like, yay? Come on, can we have Petra run up and be like, yay? What about the toes? Dude, I don't know. And finally, after all this, we see each other for the first time. Perry gets it. Nanda? Nanda? Nanio? What? What? I'm the problem? Did he just get taken over by Petal Goose? He did. Ah! 
Oh no! Maybe because he had the gospel on him? Oh, what a- the voice act is so great. <laughs> awesome. He's gotta die. Right? Can he fight this off? I don't think so. Something about gates or spirits? I don't know. I don't know. I got no way, no way out. Oh, there it is! He's fighting! No. No. I am not your finger. Only this one. It'll reset him. He's right. You're an alright dude. We could we could maybe be friends. Please kill me. Holy shit. Really, Ferris? Really? It's okay. Wild. I don't think so, man. This timeline ends. Or does it? <laughs> we have to do it all again, don't we? I wonder when- I wonder- it depends when we wake up. That's the question. Do we wake up post-whale? Do we wake up pre-whale? <laughs> Holy shit, do we wake up post-whale or pre-whale pre or post-whale? Bonkers. What made him a finger? Was it accepting the gospel? Was that it? That's so fucking wild. So by eliminating them all, we made Subaru the only vessel for him to transfer to, and he did. And he was very pleased with it, because Subaru is probably already a latent archbishop, right? He probably is pride. Or is intended to be, like, whatever brought him to this world was supposed to put him into that position. He's aligned with it in some way. Otherwise, they wouldn't recognize it in him so often. And he does have the, he has the character, like, background for it to be possible. The impression that I get is that somehow he was supposed to end up somewhere else, and getting embroiled in Emilia's experience and all those things is what prevents him from going down that path. That's the implication, I think. And so the, then the further implication is that if Petalgeuse gets his hands on this body, it goes way bad. And Subaru knows it. Does this portion, right after, say, this moment, feel like it's all sort of contrived to create this experience? Yes, but it also, it works perfectly for me. As soon as this starts to go bad, as soon as this guy explodes and we wake up here and Ferris has, like... I mean, I think of it as, like, Ferris must have had a huge portion of their body blown away and healed, right? F their whole, whole skin cover blown away because all their clothing is gone. They were at point blank to this explosion. I wonder how fast Ferris's healing can act. I, I wish we had gotten to see that. I feel like it would have been almost Wolverine-y, just, like, getting destroyed by the bomb and regrowing at the same time or some shit. Wild. 
the sneak is as soon as the sneak happens it's like well there's no way to solve this except with the meta knowledge that there is going to be this sneak happening that this guy is going to be infiltrated in the thing and then the they're going to be in the wagons so it makes me think like well maybe we're gearing up for a reset here in some circumstance like something that leads to everything going bad and once we decide you know we've got the village torn to pieces you know it's it's not as bad as before right we're here we've already moved a portion of the people there are soldiers here to fight it's not just a a totally one-sided endless slaughter some people will survive but this isn't an acceptable outcome is it once we're here everything's everything's boned so it feels like no, this isn't the time for regrets, but it is absolutely the time to look for a way to solve this. So we send Ferris out. The ability of pedal use to swap is so scary. It's so scary. Makes me wonder. The first pedal use that we met isn't the first pedal use, right? No shot. No shot. So then, how many have there been? And for how long? And how big is the witch cult, actually? Whoa. Ooh, it was scary. Watching Wilhelm fight is pretty fucking awesome. He self-destructs. Bullshit. Garbage. These guys are assholes. They fight to kill, not to win, or not to survive. To kill, to cause harm. It's really bad. It's really bad. It's a clever move with the with the barrier boundary thing and it's kind of cool i'm a little torn i don't know whether i like or feel ambivalent toward. i think feel pretty ambivalent toward having amelia show up i think it could work really well because it's like she's demonstrating her ability to save people in front of this village that has expressed distrust in her i think that's got some potency to it but i don't know i feel like we could have handled it without and then that would have been more fulfilling toward our journey of coming back on the rescue. But at the same time, we're not trying to be the rescuers of this damsel. She's not a damsel in distress. She's a, a, a wholehearted person who wants desperately to protect this village as well and is doing her best to do so. And so having her show up to do that, I think, I think does work for me. It also gives us these moments to almost taste victory, almost taste connection again, almost almost be able to see her and say what we need to to her we've got our our chance our moment and that's when the spirit is cast away and something else takes over so subaru sprints off into the forest and becomes <laughs> Oh, oh, it's so cool. I will say, of all the voice actors who did pedal use in this episode, Natsuki Subaru's primary voice actor is the best at it. Uh, he's It's just a demonstration of talent, for sure. It's very wild. It's very spooky to hear that expression, that those mannerisms coming from your boy. Come to your senses, and he does. He is different. He can fight it. I wonder if he could actually fight it off, withhold pedal use within him, and like, you don't exist anymore, man. You're within me. You're stuck. But it seems like he's pretty convinced that if he lets pedal use stay, he's going to be lost. He's only got this moment. So he begs them to slay him, knowing that it will lead to his return. We see some serious and interesting honor for them. In the context of the story, them killing him is actually kind of meaningless to Subaru. We know that he will respawn, right? Or at least we assume. Maybe he won't because Petal Goose is in his soul or something. But we assume that he will respawn. They don't know that. They still choose to do it. First, Julius can't, but Ferris trusts him enough to go for it. That's crazy. Makes me respect Fairy, Fairy Chan a lot, but also fear a little bit. And then it's Julius's like 
nightly devotion that causes him to have to do it once he sees the the torment that it's putting on Ferris and how his own unwillingness to to take on this burden by not being willing to take it on it places it on Ferris. I think that's pretty potent. I will never die. And she feels it. What a turn. First half of the episode is like confusion into capability into like man we're getting closer with Julius and he's pretty potent and and good we get some banter with 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 Ram and that's pretty okay get to the village and make a speech that'll that'll actually cut the cut the mustard and and do it that you know puts the hiding stuff away and um come face to face with the genuine nature of the racism it's not it's actually really interesting it's this like halfway racism it's it's sort of couched in something a little bit different it's not that the half elf is bad herself it's that by her presence the witch cult will be brought over it's not that she's evil it's that she's unlucky it's that she's cursed or something like that like she's the soldier with the al or the sailor with the albatross or and that's a uh, I think that's a more insidious form of sort of racism or any kind of ism or authorization or or ostracization. It's like, yeah, I recognize that you're a person and you're probably okay and whatever, but because of your nature, because of something you can't help, you bring danger upon us. And so you've got to leave. You're the enemy, because not because you're bad, but because the bad people are after you. Even if you're our ally, you're the enemy. Really, really interesting. And he finally comes to realize that these normal, good village people, people who he's come to care about and trust to some, some real extent, they harbor these fearful feelings that do stem from a place of fear. And finally, he understands a little bit. I love this from Ferris. If you don't think what you're doing is wrong, don't let other people shame you. And I think that might be the biggest takeaway for the episode, just in terms of a line that has has meaning and matters a lot. People can think whatever the fuck they want about what you're doing, but if you're certain that what you're doing is correct, and make sure that you're certain, like actually certain, because you can be wrong. Just let's be clear. You can be wrong. But if you're if you're 100% certain and you've done the due diligence to pay attention and make sure that what you're driving for matters and other people are giving you shit for it you feel ashamed of that or like you're doing something wrong don't don't head up keep going what they think doesn't really matter i like that a lot i like both of these episodes a lot um i do i think Maybe it's a little bit rushed once we get here, but that's that's how it should be, I think. Once everything explodes and goes into, like, battle fog chaos, I don't think it should feel coherent and, like, we have a strategy or a plan that's working. This all spirals way out of control way fast because of some information that we really just didn't, couldn't have until until we killed the first petal goose and entrapped him and realized that he could transfer his spirit to somebody else, there was no way to realize how ongoing this battle would be. That you'd have this super soldier with invisible mega arms that can wipe out sections of forests on a whim, hopping from body to body uh, uh, as, as you fight and defeat them. It's just like, no way to predict that. But now, with that information be, uh, you know beneath our belt, uh... I don't see what the witch cult has in terms of a, a surprise play here. I think we've got them. Like, got them, got them. If Subaru shows up and we execute the same pedal geese plan, right? No sweat. And then either before or after we hit the, the flower hypnosis thing, we just go through all the carts and make sure that we check in with all the merchants have Ferris check each of them over, see if they've got a spell cast on them or if they are a, a member of the cult, kill them well outside the village, take all the real humans and go with it. Like, solid. Seems solid. 
the power of of the power of quick saving and uh and resetting this is also i think the second this is the second intentional reset right uh, only the second one up until this point and only something that he did because he was in a position that was like totally unrecoverable once pedal goose was in his spirit again i so I, I still have a, a vibe that a lot of you are going to disagree with, and that is that as soon as he realized that the village was mostly destroyed, the mission parameters changed to gather as much information as possible to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I think if he cares about those people a lot, I think it's an easy sacrifice to make to say that I will sacrifice my well-being to reset and redo all of this. I know that there's a way to this point, and I know that I could act differently at this point to lead to different results, and those results would include the not death of a lot of people that I care about in this village. Um, I, I think at that point, like really, right here, like right right about here, when shit starts getting bad and there are a bunch of villagers dead, and it's it's obviously not going entirely our way, there's a point of like acceptable losses and beyond that i think subaru you should be trying to reset or switching your motive to gather as much information as possible before inevitably resetting i just think subaru should have a cyanide tooth he should just have a cyanide tooth he should go go full dune <laughs> blow it in blow it in pedal goose's face and then die himself and then not actually kill him because he's baron harkonnen and he's too fat dune people <laughs> All right. Uh, overall, I like these two episodes uh, quite quite a bit. There's a lot of overcoming, and a lot of internal and and psychological change that happens over these in the way that we interact with Julius, in the way that we we make decisions and move forward. There's a lot of really good stuff that resonates really well, I think, with Wilhelm and with Ferris and with all these characters sort of witnessing Subaru improving and honestly being there for him for it and, and into it and positive about it. But at the same time, the Witch Cult's got some scary fuckers. They're a scary fucking organization with some weird, weird powers that we just couldn't have completely predicted. So, time to reset and do this again. Now here's the question. How do we prevent Pelagius from jumping into Subaru? Do we avoid killing one of them? I, I think that's the move. But of course, then they could probably use their weird spirit arms to break free of whatever you entrap them in, so maybe it wouldn't work. I do think that is the move. Similar to my fears about like restraining Subaru in a way where he can't reset, I think that restraining pedal goose or one of the pedal gooses in a way that he can't reset or swap or body swap or anything might be really valuable. But maybe it does have to do with something like the gospel. Like maybe if Subaru doesn't take the gospel, he doesn't count as a as a vessel. I'm curious. I don't know. I wonder what what it is that we'll end up doing. We'll have to find out next time for the final two episodes of season one of ReZero. Overall, I think these did a really good job of following up after the whale fight and making nothing that I would point at as like a narrative error or mistake or anything even honestly confusing. These were pretty straight to the point and made some interesting points, and I really enjoyed the episodes. Bombastic and crazy and action-y? No, and that isn't the strength of the show in my opinion, so I'm honestly kind of glad. The pieces that were there were pretty cool. Wilhelm hits the, hits the ground so hard with his sword that it explodes. Neat. Um, Amelia gets to do some magic. Neat. Metal, pedal use gets to do some weird back bends and totally act as though his spine is like a connects piece that shouldn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, that's the good stuff. That's the that's the wobbly wobs. That's the weirdness. I like it. Good episodes. Potent stuff. We'll finish off the season next time on ReZero. Thanks so much for watching, despite um, my blather at the beginning, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully it's water under the bridge, but feel free to, to comment on that if you'd like. I don't really mind. And overall good times. I'll see you next week for more. Much love. Peace.